Welcome back, you guys. We are back with Behind the Bikini, episode number 58. And before we get into all of this, like, comment, subscribe, hit the buttons. We said all the fun stuff. And now, welcome our four-time Olympia qualified athlete, Jordan Brennan. <laughs> Crazy. I should, a, I should be an MC. I'll be like, you should. You are. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> So how Give me whatever you, you want to do grow up. I know, um, right? I'm not grown up yet, that's for sure. No, none of us are. We're also still <laughs> trying to grow up. Um, I feel good. I feel good. It obviously, it was a it was a great outcome. I have to be honest, it wasn't the most fun show weekend just because oh, you know, really? I to, yeah, I was just trying to keep my expectations super limited and um the way prejudging went was really wacky. So yeah, it wasn't the most fun show weekend, but obviously I'm I'm very happy with the result. Yeah. Well, we'll get into that in a second. So what we're going to be talking about today, guys, is we're going to be talking about chasing judging feedback. And uh, if you should be or should not be doing that, because we both have some experience with this, clearly. And basically, you know, with what has happened the last couple of weeks, we have to we have to be be cognizant of that. So we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit today. Um, but uh, before we get into all of that, so why don't you go into a little bit about your weekend? And, you know, to, I haven't really had a chance to talk to you. I'm sure it's been a little bit of a, of a whirlwind since since the win and all that kind of fun stuff. So go ahead and, and kind of let the ladies know. Yeah. Um, so obviously coming off of Sasquatch last week, um, you know, I told you guys that I wanted to kind of hold my feedback until after Legions um, because we just... I don't know who listens to this podcast, you know, whatever. Right. So like, you know, I never want to highlight any changes that I'm going to be making or, you know, flaws, et cetera. So um, last week at Sasquatch, Sasquatch, I came in fifth place and I went um, right after to go get feedback from Sandy. Um, and the first thing that she said was that I improved so much and I've delivered on all of my feedback. And literally, I, I think I told you guys her jaw was like on the floor when I came out for prejudging. So I thought it was going to be a really good weekend. And obviously it wasn't. So when she gave me that feedback, she's like, everything's perfect. I was like, so what can I improve on then? Yeah. Um, and they, she said that she wanted to see me a little bit tighter in the glutes, a little bit more conditioned in the glutes, but I could not be any tighter in my front pose that I was already right there. Um, so obviously that's impossible. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and that goes back to, you know, you know, judges say what they want to see, but is it possible or, you know, whatever, that's where a coach needs to come in. So, you know, Jamie and I are going back and forth after we get this feedback. And ultimately we decided that we were going to try to come in a hair leaner, like a hair, um, and then just try to max push fullness. I gave her the, the, the full send. I said, you know, after this weekend, there, we, we can't, we can't get worse than this. So, yeah. you know, we can't screw it up anymore. So even if we push food and you sp spill me, that's fine. And then we kind of know what our sweet spot is for the Olympia. Um, so coming into legions. Oh, and then also kind of looking back at, at Sasquatch too, like that was at that point my best. Um, but there was definitely some posing errors on my part. Um, I know everybody loves the purple suit. Believe me, I did too, but it just didn't pop as much, you know, okay. on the stage. Um, so there was definitely some things on my part that I needed to be better at, you know. So going into this weekend at Legions, we put the blue suit back on. Um, I think the judges have made it very clear that they like the blue suit. I like the blue suit too. You know, I put it on and I just kind of feel like me. You know, if it's not broken, don't, don't try to fix it. Um, but I was cognizant of the change to my hair color. Um, so I said, you know, hey, if I'm going to come out with this brand new hair color, I'm going to come out with everything new and then kind of, you know, work backwards. Like, what do you like? What do you not like? So um, I needed to see the blue suit with this hair color as well, which I think it looks great. So yeah, I, um, I am flying to Florida tomorrow for 24 hours to go see my best friend who does my hair. And she's going to kind of lighten up some pieces and kind of bring a little bit more blonde in, back in, but nothing, nothing crazy. So that's something that we got from that. Um, and then obviously in pre-judging in the morning with the top four, they had us moving around quite a bit and kind of where they left it off, it could have been anybody. It was four completely different bodies at Legions. Um, and like I said, the way they moved us around, it was odd. I was on the outside most of the time, but now looking back at the photos, they had it as one, two, three, four. So for whatever mm -hmm. reason, that's kind of how they were lining them up versus like splitting center and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, 
I definitely think that we accomplished coming in fuller. And I think that's mostly what we're seeing with, you know, a little bit more of that etch tie-in in there. Um, feedback from Legions was, this was perfect, come with the same look. And we got feedback from three or four of the judges and they were like, maybe a hair, maybe a hair tighter in the glutes. And one of them said, I don't know if this is that you need to be a little bit more conditioned or a little bit more full. And they said, I think you could be more full. And we agreed. We think we could pu push a little bit more fullness. So um, posing was awesome. I came out in the morning show um, and I think I did, I think I was like 85% in the morning show. Like I said, I was really cognizant all weekend of protecting myself. I had a horrible weekend last week week mentally after Sasquatch. So I was just in this kind of like fight or flight mode all day on Saturday. Um, and then once prejudging was over, I came out in finals and all the stress was over and I just had fun. And the judges said that it was closer in the morning show, but most of them had had me winning in the morning show. And then at finals, it was a done deal. They're like, you came out, you were confident, like this posing routine is exactly what you need to bring to the Olympia. So that was super good feedback. And then just for me, you know, just getting my my confidence back and my mojo back and, you know, understanding that, you know, last weekend is one weekend with one panel and that was the result. And, you know, the next weekend you could completely turn it around and, you know, bring up a little bit more of a better package and learn from that experience. And um, I just feel really validated, I guess, you know, yeah. um, and relieved and I'm proud of myself for making it through because only the people that were here that last week know what I was going through. It was pretty bad. Um, and I'm really proud of myself for kind of pulling that out. Like to me, that's the win in itself. So, yeah, absolutely. And cause it's hard, you know, you go in, like you said, with so, so much hope and expectation of, you know, cause the last time you were on stage, you won. So you go in and you're like, well, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, yeah. like it's it's hard. It's hard. To, it's hard to mentally deal with that. You know. It's yeah, very I, I hold myself to a high standard. You know, I right. have high standards for myself, and that has nothing to do with anybody. Not even the judging panel. Like I show up to win because I pour my heart and soul into it. And then when I see a posing error or man, I shouldn't have done that. So, like something that I could have changed, it kills me inside because I yeah. want. Yeah, we all do. We want. We we all compete to win, and we all want to bring our best every time. But the good thing to remember in those situations too is that there is tangible things that you can work on. Because we yeah. talked about that before. Like the worst feedback is everything looks perfect. Just keep showing That's up amazing. like this. It's like yeah. I can't. I can't copy and paste every weekend. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway. That's yeah. uh, that's my little recap. That's kind of the feedback and things like that. So um, I just checked in with Jamie today after this weekend. Um, so we'll kind of see. My, my cardio has only been at 30 minutes for the last couple of days. My weight's dropping back down from the carb up and things like that. I was able to get a little bit of a meal after the show, but nothing crazy. We just went for, for a steak. So um, I think I think the goal is to get a little bit a little bit tighter. And like I said, keep the fullness. I just took my check-in photos, though, and I'm really happy. Like, Good. really, really happy. So we'll Good. see. Yeah. Awesome, because we are yeah. a week out from the Olympia now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go right so, back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, on my end, Daytona. Let's go to Daytona. Shift over. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So, um, so like I told you, going into the show, I didn't have an expect any expectations because I didn't know if I was even going to be competitive or not. You know what I mean? Like going into a completely different division, you know, masters and all of that, and. And going into the show, I was feeling really good, you know, um, hit a low weight, you know, my conditioning is on point, all this kind of stuff. And like, <sighs> I felt fantastic. I'm eating a ton of food. Like the day before the show, it's 350 grams of carbs, all this kind of stuff, you know, and I'm like, great. And I'm filling out, looking fantastic. Well, the hotel, the host hotel was the Hard Rock Hotel. Okay. So clearly it is a hotel made for partying. <laughs> And um, that's what people were doing. And the whole night, the whole night before the show, I was woken up like every hour. It was like, it was ridiculous. And I was like, okay, cool. Awesome. So I finally got a little bit of sleep at like three o'clock in the morning. Um, but what that meant was I was up at five and I did not go to the bathroom. Like, you know, couldn't, I mean, my food didn't digest overnight. It just sat in my stomach um, all of that stuff. So if you're watching my, my, um, stories and everything a day out from the show, we decided to switch my front post. <laughs> and I was like, 
I love, I love, okay, this is fun. Fantastic. I have literally never put my left side on stage ever. Not once. Not one time. Ever. Oh, I didn't know that. No, never. <laughs> For how much you practice it. I mean, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, I practice both sides. You know, all last year I practiced that side too because um, we saw good things about it and we wanted to be able to make the game day call. We wanted to be able to do that. You know what I mean? So I, I practiced that routine all year last year. This year I still would hit it, but I didn't like practice it. You know, I didn't condition it. I didn't hold it. I didn't do any of those things. So going into this show, you know, Jamie's like, your waistline's tighter on this side, your glute pops better on this side. So let's, let's do this. And I agreed. I a hundred percent agreed. Um, the routine itself felt comfortable because I've done it a thousand times. So I'm like, this is, this is fine. I can do this. No problem. Um, you know, woke up the day of the show and my waistline was not as tight as it could have been just because of the food sitting in my stomach and being unable to go to the bathroom. Um, so switching to my left side was the best call because my right side, my, my lower abs distend more if I can't hold it tight. So switching to my left side was the right call. However, I was not conditioned to hold that pose at all. So when you say conditioned, you mean like, uh, not, not body fat. You mean by holding it? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, I can hit it. No problem. Holding it is another, is another situation. Um, okay. So when I was on stage and I hit it for my routine, it was great. Like no issues whatsoever. Cause I was just hitting it, going through it. Comparisons. I felt, I felt like it was almost impossible for me to hold it because I hadn't, I hadn't practiced it. And a few things that happened during comparisons. And so it's one of those things where you kind of you look back on it and you start realizing what you did and why it occurred that way, you know? So one of the things that I realized, and if you guys go back and watch the replay of the live stream from Daytona, the head expediter, it was almost like he had OCD or something <laughs> because he was like, every time the judge did anything, he moved us exactly like spaced apart, exactly on the line, exactly spaced apart. So that meant that every time that he told us to move, which I got moved a lot during comparisons, we had to reset our poses every time. My feedback was core control and also being tighter from behind. So when I had to reset my pose every time, I lost control every time that I had to reset my pose. So it was like every two seconds I was being told to move. So I was losing it. You know, I was losing it. And I felt myself towards the end of comparisons, not even able to sit into my hip anymore. Like I felt my whole leg shaking because I couldn't, I couldn't hold it anymore. And, um, so that was, that was very frustrating for me because I was like, I know what I have to do, but my body's not letting me do it. You know, my body's physically not letting me do it. Um, when I would transition into my back pose, one thing that Greg said when I got off stage, he's like, he's like, you dropped your glutes when you transitioned your back. I said, like, really? I was like, I was, I was like, I didn't feel like I was, I was like, so I'm thinking about it and I'm like, okay, I realized what I did because when I do my transition pose, my critique is always make sure that you keep your glutes up when you go through and you stand up tall. So I was keeping my glutes up and standing up tall, which when I went into the back pose meant it, I was standing up tall when I stepped into my back pose. And I realized this when I got home and I started working through these poses again, I was like, I physically have to tell myself bend over when I go into my back pose. Otherwise I do look like I'm dropping my glutes because I'm standing up. So I noticed that as I was going through my poses yesterday, when I was doing my check-in, I was like, Oh, I have to actually tell myself to bend over. Cause if I don't do that, I drop my glutes. It looks like I drop my glutes. because I stand up. Right. So again, this goes back to like stage IQ and being on stage. You don't realize these things until you've done it. And then, you know, I didn't even realize that part of it until I got home. And once I got home, I was like, this is what's going on. I was like, cause I'm always being told, make sure you stand up in that transition pose. So that is translating over to me standing up when I get in my back pose. Right. So I was like, okay, now I get why, why it was looking like I was dropping my glutes because I was standing up. So I fixed that too. I fixed that this week. Um, what else with the, with the posing? It was, I mean, most of the stuff that I, that was, that happened in Daytona was posing. It was posing. 
And it was mainly because I switched sides and I just wasn't, I just wasn't comfortable to the comparisons on the, on the other side. Just wasn't. Um, tighter from behind was the feedback as well, which I agree with. Um, it's that my glutes have grown a lot and I have really good projection now and I'm tight through the back and the conditioning was the best it's been. However, for masters, <laughs> masters come in like hard as nails. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I'm just not that I'm just not that, you know, we've mentioned this before. We knew I needed to be better conditioned just in general. Didn't realize just how much better conditioned I need to be. Um, and I'm just going to, I just, I just, I was the softest one on stage. I just was, you know, and it just, just is what it is. So now I know that, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, okay, even though I was full and I was tight and it was the best my hamstrings looked, the best my glutes looked comparison to everybody else. I was not. You know, so again, this is a comparisons game. And when you look, go back on it, even though your best is your best, like you said, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be comparable that day. And I wasn't. Um, on top of that, this is something that we've talked about before structurally. Uh, I am the tallest one on stage, period. When you look at the lineup, it's like everybody else is like this and me. And then Sean. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's like, you know, it just kind of is what it is. Like, there's nothing I can do about the fact that I am, you know, six inches taller than everybody else on stage. It just is what it 100%. is. So, you know, I mean, there, there's only so much that's in my control. So I, I, you know, I talked to, I was talking to Greg about this after the show. It's like a lot of this and a lot of, you know, a lot of me doing well, as far as comparisons on stage, I could bring my absolute best criteria package possible. If I don't get in the right lineup, I don't get in the right lineup. It's, it's luck. You know, so if I get lucky and I get next to girls that tend to be my size, I might fare a little bit better. But when we're talking about girls that are half my size, it just is what it is. So, you know, that all played into it. Um, I still go back to this was my best package I put on stage, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be competitive. It just, right. just is what it is, you know. Um, and then finals, I said, listen, why don't I just go back to my, my regular front, po front pose and the one that I normally put on stage and just see what it looks like. And everybody was like, oh my God, you look so much better. Cause I was just so much more confident on that side. I was tighter. Some of the water had, had come off. Um, you know, I, I was, I was tighter at night. Um, but I was just more confident. And when I went on stage, I just hit my front pose correctly. I just, because of muscle memory, like I didn't, I didn't hit it how I've been practicing it. I just, just to hit it how my, my body wanted to do it. I, it just, it was just was better. So um, that said, there's still things that need to be tweaked with that front pose. There's still things that need to be tweaked with that routine. And I've worked through those things in the last two days. Um, I actually just got my response from Jamie on my check-in this morning. So I haven't looked at it, but she just, I, the first, the first line said something like, what did it say? It said, I'm very happy with today's check-ins. You're tightening up beautifully and posing is improving. I'm like, okay, cool. So that's the first line of it. <laughs> so I just, you know, again, going back to, it's like, once you put yourself on stage, you see the flaws and you see what you can fix. And again, it goes back to a lot of the things I can just fix. You know, it's not a judging thing. It's not a comparisons thing. It's a me fixing it thing. So um, I feel a lot, lot better, a lot, lot better about where I'm at right now versus where I was last week. Um, my weights come back down. I did go up a little bit because I had a meal after the show. So um, <laughs> I had a shrimp salad and then a one pound potato. I just wanted potatoes so bad. <laughs> simple. <laughs> I was like, I just want the potato. I don't even care about anything else. I'm like, I know I need to have other foods too, but I just want the potato. So, and I had like two bites of a pretzel, a pretzel breadstick. That was it. So uh, <laughs> I was like, I know I got to be tighter, so I can't go crazy. And the day of the show, I really didn't eat much because again, my stomach was already distended and all of that. So I was like, I, I just needed to keep my, keep my food down to a bare minimum. Um, so yeah, this week, actually today, right now, we're testing a liquid carb up. So my first meal was a liquid carb source and chicken. And once we get off this uh, this podcast, I'm going to go do that again, do a pump and do another check-in and just see how I look. Because um, the goal, obviously, is to come in tighter from behind, which I already am. I'm like looking at my progress photos and my tie-ins are coming in sharper. Um, and core control. That's, that's my two, my physique goal for this coming weekend. And that's it. I mean, 
even to the point where like, because I switched back to my strong side, that is my more muscular side. And going into finals, Greg was like, whatever you do for pump up, he goes, do half of it. He's like, because you're, he's like, you're jacked. He's like, you're, that's my figure side. You know, it's my figure arm, all of that. He's like, you're jacked. So just, just calm the pump down. And I did, I only pumped half of what I normally would. Um, and I, I feel like I looked better at finals period, just, just hands down. So, um, so again, it comes back to like, every time you get on stage, you want to look a little bit better. And I did, I, even in the same day, I looked a little bit better going into finals, you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, so when it comes down to it, I was like, all right, so I get it. I need to be a whole hell of a lot harder to be in masters. It just, just is what it is. I got to be harder. Um, but again, it's going to be luck of the draw when it comes to who I stand next to. That's just it. So um, going into this weekend, um, like I said, I'm, I'm already down to my low weight again. Um, I plan on trying to come down a little bit more and stay tight. And hopefully I can keep that core control better now that we're going back to my normal side. And then we'll just see where the chips fall this weekend at Southern Muscle Showdown. It's another big list, um, big list for open, big list for masters. So I don't, I don't know who's on the list. I didn't look, I don't know if I'm going to be comparable. I don't know. I'm just doing what I have control over. And that is, that is my posing conditioning more than anything else. And just making sure I come in tighter and that's it. That's all I can do, you know? Yeah. Um, so if I come in better this weekend, it's a win for me. And then from there, we'll decide what we do as far as shows are concerned. Um, but objectively, my glutes have grown a lot, but they're still just not dense enough. I mean, it's, I've said this before, we've talked about this. This is a, this is a long game kind of sport. And while I've grown muscle, it still needs to be denser. It's still, I still need muscle maturity there. It's new muscle for me. It's, it's fullness and it's round, it's projection. That's great, but it's just not thick. Like, like a lot of these girls, especially when we're talking about masters and women that are in their forties and fifties who have been doing this and have, have had the glutes longer than I've had them. <laughs> So they have the maturity. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So again, it's like it comes down to when you get on stage, you have to have a why. We've talked about this a thousand times. You know, you have to have a why behind why you're getting on stage versus um, a objective placing or something along that line. And that's where I am right now. My why right now is so I just want to be better next time I get on stage. That's that's it. So um, I've said this a thousand times, like I said, going into last week, I didn't even know what to expect because I've just never done this before. Now that I do, I'm like, okay, I see it. <laughs> Got it. So, you know, that's where I'm at right now. So, um, again, I feel pretty good about where we are going into the show. Um, I've got two girls competing this weekend too, Jennifer, and then I've got Gabby up in, in Connecticut and they are both looking phenomenal. Um, so I'm super excited for them. I just, I'm amazed at how good, how good they look at this point. So that's where, that's where my focus is right now. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> That'll be fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's difficult, you know, I, I, you know, very similar boats, right? You come out of an improvement season and, you know, obviously we've talked about like your physique is night and day compared to last season, yeah. but mm -hmm. we don't know until you know, until you get up right. there and you kind of get compared. This is your first season in the master's divisions too. So Yep. You know, it's all about data collection at this point. And you're not um, blind to just like you just said a few minutes ago, like you need more muscle. We we, yep. we all need more muscle. Like this is the sport of bodybuilding. Like mm -hmm. even Jen Dorf, when she comes off the stage at the Olympia last year, she still had feedback. Like it's, yep. it's a never ending game. So, you know, and that's where it's really important after you do a few more shows, if you're still not getting the placings that you want to really ask yourself, what do you want out of this? And what that's is right. your why? Um, you know, is it a placing? Is it you're just doing it to have fun? Because the, the why behind it reflects the behavior and the choices and the next steps, right? So like if you're showing up to these shows and you're not getting that placing that you want, your continuous feedback is you need more, you have to make the tough call at that point. You just did a 20 right. week long prep, do you do two, three shows and go right back into an improvement season? If you're trying to win, then yeah, if your feedback is you need to grow, then you should probably shut it down now and grow. Or people right. go wrong. Sometimes they keep going because they're like, well, I just said it's 21 week long prep. I'm lean. I want to go have fun. And then they're, they're overshooting because they're, they're bleeding through muscle That's just right. to do some shows. So they're putting themselves even more at a disadvantage by the time that they, you know, finally right. shut it down. So yeah. listen, it's your first show out of the season. You had a yep. lot of stuff working against you. Um, the good thing is, is that a lot of it is fixable. So you've already yeah. 
you've already done that. Um, and yeah. you can only improve. You can only get better. You know, I, I say at least two or three shows, you know, yeah. and then you can Agreed. really get some good feedback, <laughs> different judging panels, get, a, get a, a, up against different girls. Yeah. And always what your thing is, is going to be is the height as That's well. Right. It's always so difficult. The taller girls compared to the shorter girls, the levers are just completely different. So visually it just throws off, throws it off, you know? So it's very true what you're saying it's going to be you know when it's your day it's going to be your day it's going to be your right. perfect piece with your perfect lineup and that's the name of the game in bodybuilding it's a very visual sport so that's right. it's all got to kind of line up together yep and you know and i've got some ideas as far as what i want to do after the southern muscle showdown but i'm going to wait until it's until the show's over to make those decisions because you're right at the end of the day um i want to see what i look like a little bit tighter um, and see if that makes a difference in my density and things like that. Um, it might, it might not, but I won't know until I put it on stage. So, you know, I'll make decisions after this weekend. And one of the biggest things that I'm so happy about is that Jamie's going to be there this weekend. You know, it was, it was great to have Greg there. Um, but I just want Jamie's eye. I want Jamie on, on me. That's something, that's why I wanted to do hurricane in the first place. So at this point, I'm not going to do hurricane just so y'all know it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't need to, because, um, you know, it's right after the Olympia again, you know, four weeks in a row, that's really, really hard on my, on my body. And the biggest thing that was a problem for me, it was going to the bathroom, you know what I mean? And it's just like, that's my body. Like you, you can't keep doing this over and over and over and over and over again. So depending on what happens this weekend, then I'll decide what I'm going to do the rest of the year. There's a few more opportunities for, um, for masters, you know, uh, throughout the year. So I'm going to wait and see, like I said, I'm going to wait and see what happens this weekend and then we'll determine what to do. It may be best for me to just shut it down. Um, but I don't want to do that until I've seen myself at peak condition too. So that's the, that's the goal. And then we'll, then we'll determine what to do. But, um, like I said, I, I think at this point I've pretty much decided no to hurricane because it's like, okay, it's, <laughs> it's Daytona, uh, Southern Muscle Showdown, Olympia, hurricane. Like that's a lot, you know? So eh. I'm just, I'm at the point I'm like, eh. so I've got a few things rolling around in my head and I'm like, I think I, I, I have an idea. I have an idea. Of, I don't, I'm not going to say I'm going to completely shut it down. Um, because I have, I have thought processes going through my head, but but and there's a lot of options, right? And I'm sure you're considering a lot. And, you know, when we went out to dinner Saturday night, it was me, Drew, and Jamie, and we were we were discussing the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, do I do Hurricane and go back and defend my title? I'm there anyway with, you know, athletes. Do I not? Um, then the question is, is if I apply for the Arnold next year or not? Yeah. That was something that, you know, we were talking about and that I wanted to do. But honestly, looking at my photos right now, I feel like I could build more. And yeah, yeah. my end game personally is always going to be the Olympia and yep. trying to, you know, improve at the Olympia. So is it worth staying lean to check the Arnold off my list of just shows that I want to do a bucket 100%. list item versus improving for the Olympia next yeah. year? Right. And that's a personal decision, right? Jamie's like, I support you either way. And we were kind of going through some pros and cons and things like that. So, you know, I, I think in my heart of hearts, I want to shut it down after the Olympia and, and get my boob fixed. Cause remember mm -hmm. that was one of my main goals was 100%. to pulse rise, to be able to get my, my implant fixed so I could get out of this pain that I've been having all season and then, um, grow a little bit more, you know, cause I, I, I can still grow. So I think that's, what's going to happen. But again, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you, you know, I want to get through the Olympia and kind of see what happens at the Olympia and then really get my feedback from there. And, I'm like you, like, I don't want to just keep showing up just to do bucket list shows or items on my thing, but not improving, you know, like Correct. I want to improve. So it's, uh, it's, but you got to take it one show at a time. It's, it's, yeah. it's still too early for both of us to make that decision for next season right now. We yes. need a couple more, you know, feedbacks, a couple of more thoughts of our own so that we know too, because you have to love the journey, right? Like right. if my heart was set on the Arnold, well, then my imp going into an improvement season would not be conducive for me because my brain right. is there and vice versa. Right. So that's where you really have to adjust like where you're at too mentally. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, you know, that kind of can lead us into what we wanted to talk about today, which would be our judging feedback. You know, um, it's, um, it's an interesting thing for judging feedback, right? Like it, it's hard to 
compartmentalize this sometimes for athletes. Um, I, I know, I know that we have a little bit of a better grasp on it because we're coaches. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine and, you know, he was saying, this is why you have a coach. Like, don't listen to the judges as much as you would a coach because the coach understands the feedback better than you, you know? And, and I agree with that to an extent. I do agree with that to an extent. Um, when I talk to judges personally for myself, it's more so to see if there's something that I missed as far as that I didn't see. Um, I don't, and I hate to say it this way, but I don't take all judging feedback to heart because if you do, you're going to be chasing a thousand bunny holes, a thousand rabbits, and you're going to get more messed up in the head than you were to start with. Right. Um, I talked to three judges at, um, Daytona. One of them, I'm just like, okay, I'm just writing it off. <laughs> I'm like, I listened to that particular judge give feedback to other people. And I was like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> I was like, you know, like, and that like, happened. <laughs> yeah. Literally like I, before I talked to them about my feedback, I listened to them talk to other girls and I was like, that's wrong. That's wrong. They don't know. Like it, it just is what it is. And again, I can say that because I know what they look like as a competitor. I know what I would say to them as a coach and what they were saying, what that particular judge was saying to them is not what I would say to them at all, period, zero. And this particular judge is not like a, I mean, they're an IFPB judge, so they know what they're looking at to an extent, but it's not like a Sandy or a Becky or something like that, right? And just the way they were get, delivering feedback, I was like, that's, that's just not how you deliver feedback. You know what I mean? So you kind of have to have to have that discernment as well. And I, and I, I listened on purpose because I wanted to hear that stuff before I actually went and talked to this particular judge and get that particular feedback. And I was like, okay, no, <laughs> I was like, no, that's just, this is just wrong. It just is what it is. I'm sorry. It is. It's wrong. Um, and this is also why sometimes you go to shows and they will have a specific judge for your division. You know, we're really, really good at bikini feedback. You know, we're really, really good at bikini feedback. I don't know if I would be the best person to come to and talk to about classic physique feedback or men's physique feedback. You know, that's just not my specialty. While I can sit there and judge it and I can tell you my objective thoughts on the particular division, I'm not going to give you the in-depth critiques on those particular divisions like I would for bikini. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is the way I kind of couch this when it comes to chasing feedback. Again, there's going to be judges that are better at certain divisions than they are at others. They just pay attention to those divisions more. They work with those divisions more. So again, when you're going to a show, I think it's important as an amateur athlete, pay attention to who they tell you to go get feedback from, because they're going to tell you to go to the judge that, 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 uh, knows your division best. You know, so that's the person that you should go to for your feedback, period. Because otherwise, again, you're going to be chasing bunny holes. If I listened to this particular judge, I would be chasing a bunny hole. You know, um, there was another judge that I spoke to, uh, actually a friend of mine. And um, so when I spoke to him, he only had one thing to tell me. And that particular thing I didn't necessarily agree with. However, when he said it to me, it made my brain start churning, right? And that's where I got the idea of, okay, I understand where I'm dropping my glutes. Like like Greg was telling me, and when I spoke to this judge about my, he, he just critiqued my back pose. He wanted to see more arch in my back pose. And I was like, I don't understand this. But once he said it, and once he, he I actually posed for him, I was like, okay, this actually lines up with what Greg was telling me. You know, they were both telling me kind of the same thing, but just in a different way. And I was like, okay, this makes sense. This I can work with. I can take this little piece of information and I can apply it. And again, that's when I started kind of tweaking my posing routine and stuff when I got home. And I was like, okay, now I can put this, these two things together. And I get what he's saying. He was just basically telling me to arch more in my back pose. And again, I posed for him and I was like, okay, this, this, this makes sense. You know? And again, it was just that one little piece. That's all I needed from him. I didn't need any, any other, anything else. And that was it. That was it. He said, my, he's like, I have nothing to say about your front pose. He's like, your front pose is great. He's like, I thought your whole routine was great. He's like, I just wanted to see more arch in your back pose. And I was like, 
okay, I can, I can, I can get that. I can, I can use that piece of information again, compartmentalizing and understanding where that fits into the, into the big picture for me. Um, head judge was who said core control and tighter from the back. And I agree with that. Now, with that said, I don't necessarily agree with all of the, the judging choices, which I don't think we have to, this is, this is objective sport. You know, that's kind of part of the game. Like different judges are going to have different preferences and not everybody's going to look at things the same way. And I think that's part of the beauty of the sport too. Um, but when it comes down to the actual feedback, I agree with it. You know, I agree. I needed to work on my core control. I need to work on the tightness from the back. So those are the pieces I took from it. So again, going back to, you know, if I listened to everything, my brain would be just like, at this point, you, you, as a, as an athlete, I think sometimes again, can, can ch chase bunny holes. Me being a coach, I understand what to listen to and what not to, you know? Um, and again, if I listened to everything, I would be all messed up in the head right now. So on your end, what, what did you gather from different feedback you've gotten already this, this, you know, this season? I mean, honestly, I think with feedback, you have to almost triage, right? So you have to take everything that they say. And the first thing is, what can I improve on right away? Like, what is something that I can control right now of, mm -hmm. of, you know, all the feedback they've told me to improve for next week? So for most people, that's like polish or posing, yeah. like their tan was off, their makeup didn't look good, their, their posing was off, whatever. And if that's something that you're getting your feedback wise, that's easy feedback. Then you just right. need to get to work that week and, you know, work on that posing or figure out what happened with the tan or whatever. So, you know, that's the, the, the easy stuff. Yep. Um, and then as far as, you know, different feedback goes, I think it's just really important to understand the feedback. And that's kind of what we were talking about last week, right? So like my feedback last week was, you know, to come in leaner and, but don't adjust the front pose. That's impossible, right? So then the question is after the show, when you're talking to your coach is how can I appear leaner in the back pose and keep the front pose the same? Yeah. And that's where you and your coach, you know, have to kind of decide, like, do we chase getting a little bit leaner and coming in, you know, that way? I think a lot of the time people do exactly what the judge says. And then unfortunately they show up the next weekend and it's either it, it looks worse or it's a worse placing because again, the judges say what they want to see, but that's not necessarily what needs to be executed. And mm -hmm. I know that's really hard and I don't really yeah. have a solution for that other than your coach should be able to understand the eye of the criteria that you're competing in and yeah. take the feedback and decipher the code and try to bring in what they're asking for. And that's what Jamie is obviously super good at. This is why she's a top coach. And that's where I was saying last week, I didn't really want to say my feedback about Sasquatch out loud because I wasn't chasing that feedback. The right. goal wasn't to drop any weight last week. The goal was to appear leaner from the back. Yep. And we did that really from eating more mm -hmm. and pulling off inflammation. So yes. it's, it's extremely difficult. And, and, and like I said, I'm not saying this is easy, um, but it, it, it does help you if you have a coach in your corner that understands feedback because my first coach and obviously me, when I was getting into this, didn't understand that I, I, we would just chase whatever the judges were telling us and most of the time it's, you need more glutes or you need more of this or leaner. And I, at one point just was coming in so lean that we overshot my thyroid's now in the tank and yeah. there's no recovering from that. You Absolutely. Know? So it's also too about feedback is protecting yourself. And I mean mm -hmm. that in a couple of different ways, protecting the muscle that you have and not running yourself into the ground and sacrificing muscle, but also metabolic metabolically and hormonally making sure that you protect yourself that way as well. So I don't know, like that's, you know, that's kind of our, that, that was our approach, you know, coming in from Sasquatch to legions and it, and it worked right. Like yeah. uh, my, my stage weight, just so everybody knows at Sasquatch to legions was the exact same to the ounce. I woke up both Saturdays at one, one, one nineteen point eight pounds. Yeah. So and what was my, what was my text to you? I said, damn, you did some work between the two shows. I mean, it looked vastly different. It looked yeah. vastly different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yep. I didn't, I, I, like I said, like that peak week, we weren't trying to pull off anything. Like we were just trying to keep this in a good spot, chill. I got some good body work done on that Monday to try to mm -hmm. kind of 
push and open up some lines and just try to hold that. That's all I try to do all week. Yeah. So did I chase the feedback? Not really, but I yeah. looked like I did when I showed up to Legions. Yeah. Um, and then just, like I said, you know, adjusted my posing, my presentation, my look, brought the blue suit back out, brought a completely different look and boop, it, it, it worked. Right. So right. Did, did I chase the feedback? No, but I did deliver on the feedback in a different way than what they asked. So today we are going to talk about vitamins and why they're super important for our bodies. So here's the deal. We all know that vitamin D3 helps us absorb more calcium. Well, this is vitamin K, partner in crime right here. So the really cool part is that while vitamin D does its job in getting calcium into our system, it's vitamin K2 that takes charge, making sure that calcium ends up in the right places, like our bones and our teeth. Um, so without vitamin K2, calcium can go rogue and end up in our arteries and other soft tissues. So why should we care about the two of these? Well, first of all, they're tag teaming to promote bone health, and they're also looking out for our heart by ensuring that calcium doesn't build up in our arteries. Uh, vitamin K2, it's doing a huge favor by keeping our cardiovascular system in great shape. So um, just to sum it up, vitamin D3 helps us absorb calcium and vitamin K2 makes sure it goes to the right places, avoiding any artery blockages or unwanted calcium hangouts. And both of them work together. So it's a win-win situation for our bone health and heart health. Yes. And understanding, like, again, going back to your feedback as you versus the lineup too, right? Oh, yeah, um, that was huge. It's, it's huge. It's huge. And I want to use an example from a few years back as well. There's this girl that I've worked with for years on her posing and everything. She's not a training client, but I've used, I worked with her on her presentation aspects. And um, she started out in figure. And for the longest time, I was trying to get her to go to bikini. But she's just not big enough for figure. She doesn't have the proportions for figure. She's got great muscle. She's got full round glutes. I said, you are bikini. I said, please, 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 please go to bikini. So finally, she went to bikini, right? Finally. And then she gets into a local show. Um, and the judging feedback, they told her that she should have done wellness and she would have won the show. And I was like, at that <laughs> show. I was like, at that show. I said, but listen, I was like, and so then she was all confused about this, right? I said, listen, at this show, yeah. I said, you would have won wellness. I said, just because you're the biggest girl here. I said, but your goal is a pro card. Your goal is your goal is to get onto the pro stage. I said, and you're not even big enough for a pro card in bikini right now. I said, you 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 have to be more conditioned. You need more you need more size. You need more actual density of muscle. The things that we talked about, even for bikini. I said, for this particular show, yes, it's a local show. You would have won the overall in wellness. Hundred percent would have. I said, but that's not your goal. Your goal is to be bikini on the pro stage. So a few weeks later, she goes to, and she's master's, she goes to um, master's nationals, uh, bikini. And she was too small. She was too small across the board. She was the smallest competitor on the stage. And I was like, see? <laughs> I was like, I, I'm like, I, I just, it, it, it blows my mind. I Sometimes I'm like, I wish that the judges would, um, preface this and say that, say like uh, at this show, yeah, you would have been wellness, but in order to do well in bikini on the, on the national stage, you got to get more conditioned, da, 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 whatever. Cause that's what it was. It was a conditioning thing. So she saw it clearly at that point. It's like, okay, I'm actually not wellness and I'm not figure. I am bikini, but I just need to be denser and I need to be more conditioned. She comes in the next year. And ever since then she's done bikini and she's been placing top five. At that particular uh, master show, she didn't. She was like last call out. But ever since then, I'm, she's getting really close to getting her pro card in bikini on the master stage at the national level. She's getting in that top call out. She's getting top threes, top fives, all that kind of stuff. So she's she's edging her way up there. But again, going back to that feedback that she initially got at that local level show was she should have done wellness. And I'm just like, uh, and that's the difficult part with NPC. You know, yeah. is picking a warm up show is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And I think some people undervalue the warm up show mm -hmm. in terms of cost. They're like, oh, mm -hmm. I have this local show that's down the street from me. I'm going to stay at home and this is great. I'll go get qualified and I'll go get the feedback. But here's the problem at those small shows the talent that's going to nationals next week is not going to a show in the middle of Iowa or mm -hmm. Illinois. 
-hmm. they're going to the larger big promoter mm -hmm. shows because they want to get stacked up against the girls that's going to the national show that following mm -hmm. weekend. That's right. So they get a number one unrealistic view of their physique and where it's going to stack up. Mm -hmm. Number two, most of the time at these smaller shows, the judging is not the top tier judging panels. So right. they're not as experienced. They don't have as much of an eye. It's just not the same. It's right. And I had a client that did a show with me in Illinois a few weeks ago, and she ended up placing second in the overall next to a girl, which I'll just say it. She looked about 10 weeks out. She yeah. was my girl was very conditioned, almost too hard. Um, and she was small, but she mm -hmm. definitely, if she showed up to the clash that way or a muscle contest show, she would have won. She won her class, but she would have done very well. And overall, maybe it won it. And she called me and she was like, I am so confused. Like, why is this winning? And yeah. she sees at nationals what's winning and she knows that she was more compared to a national level competitor. And I was like, look at the rest of this girl, the, these girls in this open, mm -hmm. this, this open um, overall, they were all not conditioned enough. Right. So she looked right. like an outlier. She looked right. too hard compared to the rest of the group. And that's the difficult part is explaining that to someone if like, you are the standard. But that day at this show, you were an outlier, unfortunately. You could That's be right. an outlier in a good way or a bad way. We talk about that all the time. Unfortunately, she had, to me, the best physique, the most competitive physique for a nationals. But at this show where everybody looked eight to ten weeks out, that's that's not the look they wanted that day. So. That's right. So I would say, like, if you know that you are a very high level national competitor, do not waste your time at a local warm up show that you know is not going to give you the best feedback yeah. or look compared to these <clears throat> other girls. Are you going to be saving money? Sure. But if your ultimate goal is a pro card, you need to act like a professional and you want to get up next to the girls that you're going to be hanging with next week yeah. because you want to know, do I need to be fuller? Do I need to be more conditioned? Standing in line, listening to the other girls' feedback and what they're going to be trying to do going into that show, that's all the game of chess. That's, that's right. That's how you get better in that sport. So Yep. Yep. Or... Or picking a show where your coach is going to be there because your coach probably has the best eye on you of everyone, right? So use that to work all your kinks out. You know, use that regardless. And then, and then again, just don't even worry about the judging feedback at that point because you're trying to get feedback from your from your coach and know what to fix going into the next show. Like that's for me more than anything, man. I am so glad that Greg was there at Daytona because we still don't have stage pictures from Daytona. I know I've been waiting for them because I'm trying to put our call together for Wednesday, our yeah. uh, Fit Body Coaches Educational call, where we always go over the show from the previous weekend. And yeah. your guys' photos aren't up yet. Have photos. And I wanted to do studying myself because yeah. like, I want, you know, I wanted to be able to talk to you about, you know, yep. what happened. And then, you know, yep. Ali was in that show. We had, um, who else in that show? In the day show, obviously, Ulia, who yeah. ended up yep. And so like, I wanted to do my own studying and kind of see like what the top six was like and what happened and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, your photos aren't up yet. So. You don't have photos. So I'm like, thank God that Greg was there to take pictures and video. I'm like, because I, I would have nothing. Because here's the other thing too. This is, this is a fun fact, right? So um, we took video prior to finals uh, in the hallway uh, in the natural light, right? Uh, and Jamie was like, your, your tan looks like it's turning a little green. I said, well, I just went and got touched up. I said, um, so it's still a little bit wet. And sometimes when it goes on, it's liquid sunrays. When it goes, initially goes on, it's, it is a touch green. Yeah, it is. It's got a green yeah. hue, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I literally just came out of the tanning tent and it's, it's still a little tacky. I said, <clears throat> so I'm not really concerned about it anyways. It's finals. You know what I mean? So it's not, it's, nothing's happening different. Not a make anyway. or break. Yeah. Yeah. So, but when I went on stage, because the stage lighting was a little bit more red, because of the backdrop and everything like that, my tan actually looked better than everybody else's because it canceled out the green. I agree. <laughs> I, think so, looked, I think your tan was really, really nice compared yeah. to the girl. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know what? It's like, that's something you can't plan for either until you're actually under those lights, you know? And that's why backstage, I even saw it myself and I was like, I'm just not, I'm not going to worry about it. Nothing I can do about it now anyway. But then once I got under, like you said, under the lights, it looked better. So it's like, those are all things that <laughs> just happen on show day. And those are things that you can't, I'm like, I don't know. You just can't plan for that stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah, and that was something like, I didn't get, I didn't get critiqued on my look at all. They all said it was great. 
like as far as hair, makeup, tan suit. Right oh there. yeah, your yeah your polish was perfect. Oh. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Glam by you. I don't know, by me. <laughs> I was laughing. I was so annoyed because my phone would not open all day long because my face, it didn't recognize my face. Too much makeup. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I understand that makeup makes me look like a different person, but. Because uh, most of the time we look like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no makeup. I was like, I didn't even do my brows today, man. <laughs> I never do my makeup. Sorry, sorry guys. I love you, but that's, that's it. I love you. So you get... <laughs> All you of get me. What you get. That's right. Corral. I know. I know. So funny. But it's just like, you know, and again, going back to this is why you can't chase looks. I mean, if, if and you and you can't let things off stage bother you either. Like you were talking about um uh protecting yourself when you get the judging feedback. It's protecting your mental too. Yeah. I mean, I tell my girls this all the time, like the feedback is not a attack or direct relation to you as no. a person. And you yeah. have to remember that. And mm -hmm. I think so many people, including myself, when I first started, don't have thick skin. So when That's you right. hear that feedback, it's like, Ugh. it's like you can't take yeah. it to heart. There, yeah. this, this is the name of the game of the sport. You get up on stage, you get feedback, and then you go deliver on that feedback. But if you yep. get the feedback and you immediately go crawl in your hole and you're like, I'm not good enough. That's what they're, they have to tell you something. That's right. And that's also something to remember too, is there's been some times that I go up for feedback with my athletes and I go up to a judge and, you know, we're waiting for feedback and they're like, <sighs> and they're like looking at their paper and I'm like, you don't remember her. You mm -hmm. don't have any feedback. And sometimes mm -hmm. that happens. I mean, they're human. I get it. There's 20 girls in the class and yeah. unfortunately for my athlete, they didn't write anything down and they don't remember her, you know, and some of them will just pull something out because yeah. they need to say something. Right. And don't necessarily appreciate that over the honesty of, I don't really have anything written down for you, but if you want to take your robe off and hit a front pose and back pose, I'll give you feedback. I appreciate that more than just, I've yeah. seen it time and time again, where they're pulling something out. And then I have to go behind to the athlete and be like, I, I don't think that's what they meant. I yeah. don't, you, you know what I mean? Like trying to protect the judge, but also knowing like they didn't, they didn't remember you. Yeah. At all. <laughs> well, and, that, and that's what I did backstage with the one judge too. And he told me about arching my back pose more. <clears throat> and he was like, he's like, hold on. He's like, just, just pose for me for a second. And I was like, okay, I did it. And he's like, go right here. And I was like, okay, all right, that makes sense. I got it. Makes sense. You know, that's something that they had, they weren't doing in the beginning when I started competing about five years ago. And now over the last two years, it's something I'm seeing a lot more where they're like, just pose for me right here at the, at the feedback table. And I love that because that's like that direct feedback. Etela and Becky are very good at that, especially when they're commenting on posing. Um, you know, they're, they're like, I don't like this transition. And you're like standing in line and you're like, wait, what? And they're like, just do it. And then they're, they put you exactly where they want you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and those are things too, where like, if you know, you're showing up with Becky or Etzela and they're giving you this feedback in two, three weeks, you better make sure that you nail that new transition right. they're looking for it. And they're that's human. Right. They're going to be like, oh, they did it. Cool. I'm going to move her up a little bit more. Yep. Like that's that game of chess when we're yep. talking about that in bodybuilding. Yep. And that goes back to also, like you said, and like we've been talking about knowing which judge to talk to, you know, those are absolutely talk to those judges, you know? And it's just, it, it, a lot of strategy goes into this game and a lot of it is just knowing what to listen to and what not to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I say that all the time when I'm on my, on my live feeds, I'm like, if I wasn't there in person, I was like, this is the caveat of I'm doing this from a live stream or I'm doing this from pictures. I wasn't there in person. I did not see it in person. So that's also a good you know, point. Yeah. That's also a good point is that most of the time when you're seeing the videos or judge or uh, pictures from the from the weekend, if you were not there in person, you'll notice that a lot of the athletes, or if, if you've ever been at a show in person and see the photos, the athletes look a lot harder in the yes. photos. Or sometimes yeah. they look harder. There was a show, yeah. there was a, I think our, I think that was actually Sasquatch we were talking about that a lot of us looked softer in our photos mm -hmm. last week. It's in a theater, the theater yeah. lights were yellow, it wasn't the best setup. So mm -hmm. that's also something to consider too, is that you're not really seeing the true representation of that athlete, unfortunately, through photos mm -hmm. or videos. They're either going to look, you know, a little bit better or a little bit worse, depending on what the situation was with the lighting. And uh, Dan, uh, my husband, he he screen recorded the entire uh, prejudging from Daytona on the live stream. And I looked harder on the, on the live stream than I did in Greg's videos. Yeah. So I'm like, I can see like where this could be different based on how the judges are seeing it too. You know what I mean? Like they're seeing a yeah. different view of, of either of those. 
Yeah, you know, you know what's interesting is Angela White, who's competing in um, Georgia this weekend, yeah. mm-hmm. she's by my husband, Drew. She came over last night to do an in-person check-in, and Drew had his phone out, and he had our, you know, lights out. And she, obviously, she's standing in front of us, and he's like, look at the phone compared to her. So, like, I'm yeah. looking at the phone. like, how much percent is it off? I was like, yeah. she's 15% harder in the video right now compared, compared to in person. He's like, remember that for her when, like, I'm not on site, and you are, and, yeah. you know, you're sending me videos, like... The athlete, she looked 15% harder in yeah. the standing right in front of us, you know. Perfect. This is a perfect example, too, because I've got Jennifer competing this weekend. She um, she sent me – we're going to do this on the on the coaching call today, too. But she sent me pictures and videos this morning, and I was looking at them, and I was like, okay, we need, we need to plead her just a little bit more. I can see she's got some striations in her glutes, that kind of thing, but we need to bring her down just a touch. But anyway, she went and trained with her trainer today in the gym. So she gave me feedback from him and said, you know, Dwayne said that this is the leanest I've ever been and that I'm striating the glutes and da 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 da. I said, yeah, I said, I I agree. I said, you know, I can see through that because I've seen her in person. I know what she looks like in person. I said, I agree. I said, you do have striations in your glutes right now. I said, that's why we're still, we're still in the process of depleting you. I said, but when we get you to show day, I want to be able to pop you so that those aren't a problem. I said, but in order to do that, we also need your waistline really tight. I said, so we have to keep you depleted right now. And then we'll, we'll get those carbs in you going into the show and all that kind of stuff to fill all of that out so you don't striate through the glutes because she's right i'm like she's like in the in her back pose and as she walks we see the little movement you know what i mean so um all of that comes down to tweaking everything you know and i, and I appreciate the the um the feedback from the in-person view as well because he was like this is the leanest she's ever been and the funny part about it is that she's like four pounds heavier right now than she was at her last show and it's the leanest she's ever been yeah yeah, so it's gonna be. I'm very excited for her. It's gonna be a completely different look. So yeah, completely. See what you guys come out with. Yeah, I'm too. I was like, I was, like, and, and that's what I said to her. I was like, I have no doubt in my mind that we're doing the right thing right now. I said because you look a thousand times better when you're so full like this. I said I do want you to to suck down just a touch in the next couple of days so that we can just pop everything. I said, but we're not doing a whole lot of man- manipulation or anything like that because you look great fuller, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's a, and again, going back to, I, I get what he's seeing in person. Dwayne is seeing in person because I've seen her in person too. So I understand right. that. And it's different. On the same page. Yeah, and it's different looking at pictures and videos. It's different looking Absolutely. at pictures and videos. You know, it just is. So no, I think she looks fantastic. And again, it, it, it's like you said, it's like, it's just so, it's, it's crazy how the different mediums can make you look so different, right? Absolutely. And, it's just like it's and that's why you can't get too caught up on it either because it's just such a mind fuck otherwise always know? always i mean i even take my my check-in photos sometimes i'm like is this really what i look like yeah i know i, I do it all the time i'm like yeah. what the fuck? i'm like is, yeah. that, is that right or is that wrong i'm like yeah. i don't know i don't know i can't see it i know <laughs> it's so easy for me to see it on other people but it's really hard for me to see it on me that's why we're not our own coach that's right that's why we have coaches i don't know i really don't know how people coach themselves i don't i give them a lot of credit the people that do yeah i just can't i can't do it i'm like i'm just gonna shut up and i'm gonna eat what i'm supposed to eat (laughs) i'm gonna do what i'm supposed to do and just that's just how it is it's just how it's gonna go so like even yesterday i was like Man, yesterday was such a busy day just because I was gone for all weekend and my Mondays are busy anyway. And I'm like, okay, I got it. I got this to do, that to do. So my car is in the shop right now. And um, so I don't have a car. So Dan's gone and I'm like, I got to get chicken. I have no chicken. I was like, fuck. So I was like, I get the get in an Uber to go. I had to go drop off packages and stuff anyway to ship out to UPS store, which is right next to the grocery store. For me to go home, it's about an hour walk to walk home. So I was like, well, fuck it. I'll just walk home and get all my steps in. So I went, did my grocery shopping, and I walked home. (laughs) It's like, screw it. It took took me 50 minutes, 50 minutes to get home. So I had a decent pace, you know. But uh, but I was like, well, I would do this anyway to get my steps in. So let me just make the most of my time, you know. Sometimes it's nice when you have a lot of steps like that, especially like post-show when you're trying to deplete again. Like it's kind of nice the environment to get outside 100%. or you know something like yeah. especially after a weekend like you just had which yeah. again I just had a weekend very similar so I get mm-hmm. it like just to kind of like be in nature and like off your phone and yep. kind of ground like yep. 
there's there's beauty to that. So I'm proud of you for doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. <laughs> I was like, I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna do do this. And it felt, you know, and it felt good. I got home and a little bit of sweat going, you know, all that kind of stuff just from walking. And I got all my steps in, more than all more than all my steps in. And you know, this morning, again, my my bowel movements are back on on plan. So I'm happy about that. And I went no problem this morning and I hit another, you know, low weight this morning versus yesterday I was up. I was up higher by almost a pound and a half from two pounds almost. I don't know. I remember. But I was up anyway. Okay. Yesterday. Um, because I just hadn't I hadn't relieved myself fully, you know. I was yeah. <laughs> You should, you guys. So funny story. We're sitting at dinner after after the show, and we're all just you know it's it's me and Allie and her boyfriend husband um, Yulia okay. and um, uh, Greg, and we're all just sitting there eating. And I'm just and it, a it took them an hour to bring us our food. It took an hour for them to bring us our food. I was dying. I was so hungry. So I housed that freaking pound potato and no no time flat. And, <laughs> and I'm sitting there. And then we're waiting for them to come bring the check. And I'm like, I'm dying. I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom so bad. I was like, oh, so that's finally, the one time you had to go. <laughs> so, so I finally, I said, guys, I said, I hate to do this. I said, but I got to go back to the hotel. Like, now. <laughs> I was like, they're like, oh, no, we get it. Let me take you back to the hotel right now. So Allie and their, her, her man there, they got the car. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> I was like, because if it's, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen, like, right now. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm glad you were able to feel better. <laughs> and, I, and I was able to go finally, not fully, but I was able to go. And the same thing on Sunday, I was able to go. So that was good. Like everything started moving again, but not fully. Yesterday, fully released. Good. And I was like, <sighs> so I am, I am a little bit concerned about that for Georgia because our, our stage time is 9 a.m. for prejudging. Wow, that's early. So I'm like, I'm going to go to bed at like 8 o'clock. <laughs> Hey, I go to bed at eight o'clock all the time. So I see, I don't, I don't, I go to bed late. You know, I'm a late person. Yeah. I go to bed at midnight and I get up at eight, you know, or I try to, I lay in bed till eight. I'm really up, up at six thirty seven, but I lay yeah. there <laughs> at least let my body just stay there. So I'm hoping I can go to sleep that night yeah. again, again, why we're doing the liquid carb source to try right. to keep the waistline, keep the waistline tight and all of that. Yeah, so that should, that should, uh, I'm excited to see how that works for you. Yeah, me too. Well, I took the first. Yeah. First dose this morning, like I said, as soon as we get off this podcast, I'm going to do the second one and do another check-in and uh, do a little pump, see where I'm at, and just see how it, how it affects my body right now. But um, no, I'm just, you know, I got I got to gotta figure out the core. You got to figure it out. Got to figure out what it works. Out. That's it. With this know? new body. I know, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and that's the fun part, too, because every time you come on stage, it is new. You know, so it's like, yes. okay, well, this is, this is cool. Like, and you want it to be. You don't want to look the same. You know, so even if it, even if everything else goes wrong, if your body has improved, you've done your job. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. So, well, good luck um, this weekend. I'll be thinking you. about you. I'll be watching the live stream. Yeah. When do you, when do you get to Vegas for the Olympia? Next Wednesday. I okay. okay. Yeah. But tomorrow okay. I actually leave. I'm going to uh, Tampa for 24 hours. I'm going to get my hair done and get my Botox and filler done. So I, I arrive tomorrow night around like 10 PM. I'm going to go right to my best friend's house, spend the night there. And then, um, I'll be in the chair all day and then fly back home tomorrow or Thursday night. And then, um, I actually hired a trainer out here. Um, so I'm going to be starting with him today at one o'clock. Um, Drew gave him all the programming and basically said, run her into the ground until we nice. leave for Vegas. So I'm just, I just need that push and that motivation right now. I'm not giving it to myself. So, um, he's someone that I really respect. He works in my building, um, the okay. building that I live in, um, and getting ready. To, there's a really big gym that's getting ready to open out here. He's the head coach for that gym that's getting ready to open. So his name is Nate. So I'll start tagging him on social media and stuff as well. He's a great coach. So I'm excited awesome. for that too. Um, cool. I got back pretty late yesterday because NPC was on Sunday at Legion. So we didn't get home till Monday night till last, um, last night. And, had to go train last night, you know, it yeah. is what it is. So, you know, got off the plane, got, you know, did laundry, all that stuff and um, took myself through a good, good glute session last night. So, you know, the, the goal at this point is just to train hard as a buck as I can yeah. and going into the Olympia. And then Wednesday when we are traveling, start pulling back on inflammation and things like that. So I'm waiting for my check-in response from Jamie too, to kind of see what we're doing today. So yeah, I'm excited. Cool. I'm excited. Just like kind of keep, keep on going, keep on moving every day right now. We're not like, we're not, like I said earlier, we're not really trying to do anything right now. We're just kind of checking in every day and going to make adjustments every day and keep working and bring our best. 
Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And the same thing. I stayed in Daytona throughout the day so I could go train and stuff. Cause I knew, I mean, if I'd done like a midday flight or something, I'd have been screwed. So I just stayed there till that evening so that when I got home, I just went to sleep. <laughs> and I, was gonna, I actually fell asleep in the Uber <laughs> on the way, on the way to, yeah, on the way to the airport. And then on the way home from the airport, I fell asleep in the Uber. So yeah. Long weekend. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, for this week, I think we'll we'll cut it there because I know we both have really busy um, timeframes coming up, and I didn't I didn't pull any questions, any fun things or anything like that. I got a closing call in three minutes anyway. Perfect. So. All right, perfect. <laughs> That's fantastic. I got to go drink my my next <laughs> my next meal anyway and get this pump pump thing in. So and see what Jamie has to say fully. So um, awesome. Well, I'm excited. This is this this year is it's, it's almost over. <laughs> so we just got to give it our all for the next the next couple of weeks here absolutely absolutely i'm excited all right. well for everyone out there watching thank you so much for staying with us um and for all the support throughout the weekend too i don't know about you but i had a lot of support throughout the weekend from the behind the bikini Same. yeah yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it was it was really cool to see that so i appreciate that i don't i know i didn't get back to everybody in the dms but i hopefully hearted every message <laughs> so regardless i we appreciate you guys um, so like, comment, subscribe, all of the fun things. Uh, this is episode 50, do we say 58? We're on 58, right? Cool. Yes. All right. And with that, you guys, we're off to Olympia week. We're off to Olympia week coming up. Yes. All right, guys. Have a see great, you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see y'all soon.